In this first video on complex numbers, I'm simply going to introduce the concept. There will be a couple of different videos looking at different aspects of complex numbers, so you can watch them either in order or look for the one that would suit your need. So before we jump into complex numbers, just some things that you'll need to know before you look at that. Firstly, how to measure angles in radian measure. The most common measurements for angles are degrees and radian measure, but in this series of videos we are going to simply be using radian measure, but you can also use degrees. We're going to look at how to solve equations in real numbers, properties of addition and multiplication in real numbers we're going to use, and we're also going to refer to the Euler number E. So let's jump right in. If we look at different number systems that exist and that we're familiar with, the first one, and that's the one we start learning, is the natural numbers. The natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. That number set is expanded to the integers. The integers, you should know, is all the negative numbers, positive numbers, whole, but all the whole numbers. So all the negative numbers up to 0, then 1, 2, 3, and carrying on. Now, hopefully you can see that the natural numbers are a subset of the integers, meaning every natural number is also an integer. Then we expanded the set of numbers further, looking at rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are all numbers that can be written as a fraction, where those numbers P and Q are integers, but it has to be noted that Q cannot be zero. And just take note, the rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction, so not necessarily that are represented as a fraction, but that can be. So, for example, the whole number 1, you can write 1 as a fraction of 1 over 1, so it fits into that set as well. And similarly, all integers are rational numbers. But it doesn't go the other way around. There are rational numbers that are not integers, for example, a half. And then the real number system is the numbers with all the rational numbers, but also the irrational numbers. Now, irrational numbers doesn't have a nice definition necessarily, but we're thinking of numbers that have ugly decimals that carry on where there's no pattern. So if you think of roots, if you think of pi, you think of e, those are all examples of irrational numbers. But if we group them all together, then we get to the real numbers. And up to there, now, if you've not looked at complex numbers, that's the full extent of the number systems that you have looked at. So if we look at solving equations in R, and this is, well, equations in number sets, and this is what wrote, how the complex numbers started. If we look at the first equation, now these are all simple equations, it's not about solving them, but just illustrating the concept. If we look at the first equation, x minus 3 is equal to 0, you can hopefully all see that the solution to that is x equal to 3. Now this set has a solution in the natural numbers, x equal to 3, and therefore because of the subsets, it's got a solution in the integers, the rational numbers and also the real numbers. There's nothing strange happening there, but if I look across to the example x plus 5 equal to 0, if I'm only working in the natural numbers, then this equation has no solution. It does, however, have a solution in the integers, where x is equal to minus 5. So already we're saying that I've got an equation that doesn't necessarily have a solution in a specific set of numbers. But if I expand my set of numbers, I do get a solution. Similarly with the next one, x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. If we look at that, there's no solution in the integers. There's no whole number that I can square and subtract 3 and get 0. But you know that in the real number system, there are solutions to this equation. If x squared is 3, then x is equal to positive or negative the square root of 3. And those are real numbers. So it's, that equation has a solution in the real number system, but not in the whole numbers, integers. All right, so let's look at where the problem starts. Now we get to the equation x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. Now the problem here is, if I look at the real numbers, there is no real number that I can substitute into the place of x to make this equation true. So there's no solution in the real number system. There is, however, a bigger number system, and that's where the complex numbers came from. Looking at an equation like this, saying, but I want a solution. All right. Now, these videos are going to take a full circle, and at some stage we're going to get back to solving many equations in complex numbers. So now it's not just about the solution, but it's about 
the problem. The problem is we want a solution to this equation, so that brings us to the complex numbers. So a complex number is an expression, z equal to a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers. So this part is a real number, this part is a real number. And this i has a very special property, and it's got the following property. i squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Or you can say that i squared is equal to minus 1. Now, there's no number i in the real numbers for which this is true, but this is why we're introducing this new number i. We call it i. Now, depending on the field you're in, some fields use the number j because i is reserved for some other variables, but it's just a name. So for us, we're going to be using i for this number. So that is what i satisfies. So some examples of complex numbers. Z1, 3 plus i times 4. Another one, Z2, minus 5 plus i times 3. Those a and b's don't necessarily have to be integers, they can be any real number. So it can be minus 7.89 plus pi times i, or i times pi. So those are all examples of complex numbers, and you can generate many more. So the whole set of complex numbers is then the set of numbers that can be written in the form a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the property that i squared is minus 1. So now if we go back to the number systems, we can see we've now got a complex number system. So these complex numbers we've added is all the a plus ib, where a and b given a and b are real numbers, and i squared is equal to minus 1. So now the question is, is there a link between the real numbers and the complex numbers? Now if, now we can see the complex numbers looks like it's made up of way more, so if the real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers, then I need to show that every real number is also a complex number. So let's look at a real number. If a is a real number, can I write it as a plus i times some other real number? And the answer is yes. I just choose b to be 0. So my real number can be written as a complex number, and we can see that the real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. So every real number is a complex number, but it doesn't go the other way around. All right. So that is what the complex numbers look like. Now, we call this way of writing the complex numbers, z equal to 4 minus 6i, we call it rectangular form. And we'll see why that. There will be other four ways of representing it. For now, we're looking at rectangular form, and we're going to be looking at operations on re in rectangular form. Right, so if we look at complex numbers in rectangular form, we can represent them on the Argon plane. It's a complex plane. It looks very much like the Cartesian plane, and we'll look at some similarities shortly. So if I've got a complex number, 4 minus 3i. On the argon plane, the horizontal axis is the real axis. The vertical axis is the imaginary axis. Now, with the Cartesian plane, you think of the x-axis and the y-axis. This is a different plane, but it works the same way. This, I can think of this complex number in terms of an ordered pair, 4 minus 3. So the horizontal axis, the real axis, I've got the value 4. And on the imaginary axis, I've got the value of minus 3. So that's the point 4 minus 3. So let's just look at what we said. I said the real axis, we've got the number 4. Because this is the real component. If I look at the real component of z, I get the number 4. Because there's no i attached to it. The imaginary component of z, and we'll talk about that word shortly, is minus 3. That's the part attached to the i. So this complex number, in general, a plus ib, and I, I wrote 3 times i rather than i times minus 3. We'll see from the properties that it doesn't really matter which way I write them. If I look at the ordered pair a, b, the real part is a, the imaginary part is b. So this part is called the imaginary part. Now, it's a very unfortunate name because it makes you think that it doesn't exist, that it's imaginary, that it's made up. But that's just because originally there was not really a practical application for complex numbers. That came later, so it was named as such. So every complex number we can look at as an ordered pair made up of two parts, and they represent, they're represented on the argon plane similarly to ordered pairs that we know.
And that ends our first part and we will move on to look at operations on complex numbers shortly.